Confirmations and public elections. It's Tuesday, January, January the 5th. Um, we can go ahead and take roll. Um, Councilman Rosenberg. I see you. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> uh, Council Lady Evans. Present. Council Lady Lee. Council Lady Murphy. Present. Councilman Rutherford. Here. Uh, Council Lady Sepulveda. Here. Councilman Sledge. Council Lady Stiles. I am present. Councilman Pulley. I'm going to go back through um, Council Lady Lee, Councilman Sledge, Council Lady Stiles, Councilman Pulley. Okay. We are moving on. I, um, pursuant to Governor Lee's Executive Order Number 71 regarding electronic meetings, I make a motion that this committee meeting agenda constitutes essential business of the Metropolitan Council and that meeting electronically is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans in light of the COVID-19 outbreak. Can I get a second? Second. Perfect. I'm going to go through the roll. Um, all, uh, uh, yet or nay, Councilman Rosenberg. Aye. Council Lady Evans. Aye. Council Lady Murphy. Aye. Councilman Rutherford. Aye. Council Lady Sepulveda. Aye. Johnson is an aye. Councilman Pulley. Stiles. Sledge. Lee. Still absent. Okay. Um, all the resolutions I've put on consent, if anyone wants to pull anything off, please let me know. I'm going to read through them. Um, RS 2021-702, Johnson approves the election of certain notaries public for Davidson County. Uh, RS 2021-711, Vercher requests the Tennessee General Assembly to enact a statute to mitigate the negative impacts of blasting operations. RS 2021-712, Van Rees and others, supports the bid of the Nashville Convention and Visitors Corp on behalf of the Metro government to be host for the uh, 2026 FIFA World Cup. Uh, RS 2021 Hurt and others, honors the life of... Qu I'm going to try to say this, Kwame Lillard, maybe, Lilo, I don't know. I think I got Kwame right. Um, RS 2021-714, O'Connell and others, honors the six Metro National Police Department officers who responded to the Christmas Day bombing on 2nd Avenue and expressing gratitude to all first responders who assisted, assisted at the scene. Um, does anybody have anything they want to pull off of that consent agenda? Okay, can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Properly seconded. Perfect. I'm going to go through roll. Um, Councilman Rosenberg. Aye. Council Lady Evans. Aye. Council Lady Murphy. Aye. Councilman Rutherford. Aye. Council Lady Sepulveda. Aye. Johnson is an aye. I'm going to go back through Lee. Sledge. Stiles. Fully. Okay. All right. We have one late item. It's a late resolution by um, Council Lady Gamble. Um, resolution expressing the council's intent for the parcels included in ordinance uh, number BL 202491, which extended the boundaries of the urban services district to be included on the tax rolls for 2021. Um, can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, it's Council Lady Gamble with us. I'm here, Chair. Perfect. You have the floor. Um, and I think we're just discussing not necessarily what's in the bill, but why it's late. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, I'm asking for a suspension of the rules for this resolution. Uh, it came to my attention by the property uh, assessor's office, and hopefully someone is on the call from the assessor's office. I see uh, Ms. Hannah Zeitlin on the call, and they may be able to explain better uh, the reason for this resolution, late file resolution. Uh, but it came to my attention on uh, New Year's Eve, actually, that the bill that we passed, uh, 491, on December 15th, had a statement in it, uh, Section 5, I believe it was, that said the bill would be effective, the ordinance would be effective uh, 30 days after the passage date. And that would make it uh, effective 
since we passed it on December 15th, uh, January 15th, 16th, and we needed it to be effective by January 1 to be included in the January 1 tax rolls. Um, and uh, so it was suggested by the property assessor's office that we uh, didn't have to rectify the bill, but to just do a resolution to express the council's intent in passing it on December 15th, that it become effective at the time of passage and not 30 days later. And there's really no reason, I'll let uh, Ms. Zeitlin speak to this, to have the 30-day clause, but I think that was something that had been in previous uh, USD annexation ordinances, and it was just something that was left in the ordinance. Ms. Zeitlin, can you speak to that? Yeah, you're absolutely correct. There's nothing in state law. There's nothing in the Metro Charter or any Metro Code that requires a 30-day waiting period. That's just standard language that has appeared in uh, USD annexation uh, uh, legislation uh, in the past. So it was included in this one. Uh, and and it's just to alleviate some of the concerns from the property assessor's office. Perfect. Does anybody ha ha have any questions or um, have any objection to this suspension of the rules? I'm going to scroll and look for any hands, which I do not see. All right. I see no objection. Thank you so much for coming and explaining that, Council Lady Campbell. Um, okay, bills on second reading, 2020-587, amends uh, substitute ordinance bill, uh, BL 2019-1653, to amend the requirement that a flag of the Metro government be presented to the family of a current or former elective Metro official, including the current or former met member of the Metro County Council upon the official's death. Um, I do have a letter to approve from Council Lady Allen, but she may be, I see her, there she is. Um, Council Lady Allen, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. If someone could move it, I have a slight amendment I would like to offer. So moved. So moved. Second. Perfect. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded. Council Lady Allen, back to you. Thank you. Just a brief explanation on the amendment. Um, I, I ran this past. Um, the folks at the MNPD and their only request was to add uh, specifically a condition that the chief of police would have discretion on this uh, just in the, you know, the very rare case where someone was discharged honorably or something and he wasn't comfortable um, honoring that person. We don't expect it to come up, but they did ask to have that language added. And so that's what the amendment does. And so I would ask for your approval for the amendment and for the bill as amended. Okay. Would someone like to move the amendment? So moved. Second. Perfect. Any other questions or discussion on the amendment itself? All right. I'll take a roll call on the amendment. Um, Councilman Rosenberg. Aye. Council Lady Evans. Aye. Council Lady Murphy. Aye. Councilman Rutherford. Aye. Council Lady Sepulveda. Aye. Uh, chair is an aye. Um, do we have Lee, Sledge, Styles, or Pulley with us? Sledge is here. I'm an aye. Styles, aye. Okay, um, let me hold on. Council Lady Lee? Still not here. Aye. Oh, she is here. Aye. Okay. Aye. I hear you. Okay. I got, got Sledge as an aye. I think I saw Styles as an aye. And um, Councilman Pulley, are you here? Still not here. Okay, got those three. Perfect. Okay, so the amendment is on. So now we are on uh, the bill as amended. Any discussion on the bill as amended? All right, I will take a roll on that. Councilman Fisberg. Aye. Council Lady Evans. Aye. Council Lady Lee. Aye. Council Lady Murphy. Aye. Councilman Rutherford. Aye. Council uh, Lady Sepulveda. Aye. Councilman Sledge. Aye. Council Lady Stiles. Aye. Um, Johnson is an aye. And Pulley, are you here yet? Still a no. Okay, perfect. Thank you all so much. Thank you, uh, Council Lady Allen. Okay. Thank you. 
Elections and confirmations. I'm also going to put all of these on consent just to avoid the every having to go through every single one of them, um, both tonight and on the floor with a roll call. Um, so I'm going to start uh, with um, the action commission reappointment of Ms. Talisha Cobb for a term expiring uh, February the 2nd, 2024. Can I get a motion? Motion. And a second. Second. Perfect. Um, Ms. Cobb, are you with us? I am. Perfect. I just want to give you a couple of minutes. Hi, thanks for joining us. Um, just want to give you a couple of minutes to um, let us know why you would like to continue to serve in this capacity. Absolutely. Thank you for reconsidering my appointment. Um, it's been a pleasure to serve thus far. And I've learned and observed so much about this agency and really the incredibly important work that they're doing, um, not only for resilient people, but for our entire city and um, navigating challenges with such grace. And uh, it's really multi-layered and they serve in both short term and long term with resilient people. And it also is, has many moving pieces to it um, in regards to funding mechanisms. So I really would love to consider uh, to be reconsidered um, because I'm, I'm just learning about this amazing work and I'm learning about how I can contribute to it. And I understand that it's very important. They're deserving of commissioners that are able to show up and be fully present and um, to be oversee accountability uh, because of the different funding mechanisms and to contribute a spirit of hope and limitless possibility and to be deeply committed uh, to the mission and the vision. And I really strive to be that person. Thank you. Thank you so much. Does anyone have any question uh, for Ms. Cobb? Uh, Councilor Eddie Vircher, I see your hand. You have the floor. Chair, I'm, I'm out of order. I, I was at, trying to ask about 7-Eleven. Oh. About what again? 7-Eleven. I didn't know if it was rolled, if it was rolled or not. I think that was on consent. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Sure. Um, I'm sorry, Ms. Cobb. I'm not seeing any hands um, for questions. Um, so thank you so much for being with us tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, we all appreciate your willingness to continue to serve. Thank you. Um, yes. Arts Commission appointment of Ellen Angelico or Angelico. I'm not sure somebody um, correct me because I don't like mispronouncing people's names for a term expiring January 1st, 2021. Ellen, are you with us? Hi. How, how do you Angelico say is my last name? Say it one more time. Angelico. Angelico. Got it. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, would you give us a few uh, minutes to explain why you would like to serve in this capacity? Sure. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Councilmember Van Rees for believing in me and nominating me for this position. Uh, the arts made me who I am. Having a strong arts background provided me with a shield from bullying as a kid and the confidence and strong self-image needed to face discrimination in my professional life. I know from experience that having a vibrant arts community has a direct effect on Nashville and its quality of life. I want to leave Nashville better than I received it. I think it's my responsibility to put in the work so the next generation of Nashvilleians have a vibrant and equitable community. That's why I devote my time to organizations like Girls Club Nashville, businesses like Fanny's House of Music, and initiatives like Nashville's annual She's a Rebel concert. Uh, Nashville has a unique opportunity to lead American cities by example, investing in communities and the art that makes them unique. And I am ready to take my work ethic, my positive attitude, and my organizational skills to the next level and make Nashville a better place. Thank you so much. I, for one, appreciate your enthusiasm. You've um, gotten me uh, uh, excited about it. Thank you. <laughs> You're, um, you're in justice. That's great. Um, I, ha I see a couple of hands. I'm going to start um, with Councilman Rosenberg. Um, he's on committee. Councilman Rosenberg, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to make sure everybody knows that Ms. Angelico wrote and performed the John Cooper song from our last meeting, and it was fantastic. And anybody who hasn't heard it is missing out and needs to locate it. So thank you for that. It was a nice finish to the year. 
Thank you. I, my fame continues to spread farther and wider than I ever wanted. <laughs> um, anybody else on committee? I know uh, Council Lady Van Reese wants to uh, say a few words. I don't see anyone else's hands. Council Lady Van Reese, you have the floor. Yeah, I just I just have four words. Uh, Ellen is a badass. Uh, that's all I have to say. <laughs> Very succinct. Thank you so much. We appreciate you, Ellen. Thank you. Um, okay, moving on to the Arts Commission appointment of Mr. Jim Schmidt for a term expiring January the 7th, 2024. Mr. Schmidt, are you with us? I am, Madam Chairman. Perfect, thank you. Will you give us a few minutes um, to let us know why you would like to serve in this capacity? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Thank you all very much for your service and I look forward to hopefully continuing our, my service on the Arts Commission. I've been on the Arts Commission for a few years now. Uh, as of the November meeting, I'm actually the uh, chairman of the Arts Commission. So certainly I would like to continue in that capacity. Uh, we're very lucky to live in Music City, USA, one of the great cultural institution cities in, in the world. And we certainly have a lot of challenges facing our arts community here in Nashville. The commission and the staff over there have done an amazing job. And I certainly want to help continue uh, to support them and support our city as we look for uh, ways to continue to build up the arts community, the cultural institutions we are so lucky to have here in Nashville. So, thank you. Thank you. And I'm sorry, my sheet said um, just an appointment, not a reappointment. So thank you for your, your service. And um, so I apologize for that. Um, does anybody have any questions? I see Council Lady Murphy, you have the floor. I just, uh, I promised uh, Jim that I wouldn't speak or ask any questions. And so I wanted to take this opportunity to first acknowledge that I wasn't going to uphold that and just thank him for his years of service on this um, committee. If you know Jim, you know that he is super involved in all sorts of things across Nashville. And we are lucky that he saved some time for us. So thank you, Jim, we appreciate it. Thank awesome. you for those kind words. Does anybody else have any questions? or comments, do you have a song that you've done too? I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, thank Madam you. Sir, I will say, I feel like I was upstaged by <laughs> Ellen, who's clearly gonna be an amazing rock star on the commission, so. <laughs> it sounds like it's gonna be a lot of fun. Thank y'all both. Um, all right, hospital authority appointment for Ms. Michelle Robertson for a term expiring at September the 6th, 2025. Um, Hannah, John, I believe we have a possible withdrawal of this nominee. Uh, this is Hannah's Island. Let me check on that really quick. Madam Chair, this is Mike Jamison. I can comment to that if you would like. Please do, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Um, this nomination for Michelle Robertson, um, it was deferred from the December 1st and the December 15th meeting when we had been advised that uh, Nashville General had some concerns. Um, just to summarize very briefly their concerns, it was about um, any executive of a local hospital serving on a board. We uh, had a good meeting with general hospital representatives and had hoped from that meeting to schedule a, a personal uh, interview between Nashville General Hospital personnel and Ms. Robertson to discuss their concerns. Um, General has a lot on their plate this this past month and this current they're dealing with um, they're dealing with a required audit they're finalizing a professional services agreement and of course the pandemic and even the holidays so the meeting never got scheduled our problem is this under the charter if this is deferred again tonight it becomes automatically approved and uh, the administration does not want um, any sort of approval by deferral or by technicalities. We would, and we cannot waive that effect. We earlier thought we might have an option there of one more deferral, but that is not uh, a possibility. So because we don't want any sort of confirmation on the te technicalities and Ms. Robertson doesn't want that either. She would like the, the rules committee to meet with her interviewer, ask questions. Our intention is to withdraw her nomination night and ask the vice mayor to renominate her and schedule the interviews with hospital personnel, rules committee, hospital authority chair, and so forth. So with that, we do withdraw this nomination and I thank you, chair. 
Absolutely. All right, moving on to sexually oriented business licensing board appointment of Ms. Lynn T. Ingram for a term expiring October 7th, 2024. Ms. Ingram, are you with us? I am. Thank you so much for, um, for being with us tonight. Can you give us just a couple of minutes on why um, you would like to serve in this capacity? And I'm going to assume that you are being appointed and not reappointed. That is correct. Okay, um, sometimes yes. my sheet's wrong. Okay, go ahead. Sure. Um, so I have um, been practicing about 18 years. Most of that has been working with uh, victims in various capacities, child exploitation, human trafficking. Um, and I prosecuted my first federal human trafficking case in 2010 here in Nashville. Um, I believe serving on this um, commission would help in a sense that I can help protect the employees um, I understand that we're looking at trying to get the World Cup here. Um, and when we have huge events that happen all over the world um, with those huge events and sports um, comes human trafficking. And so these um, sexually oriented businesses are places that I think are vulnerable um, and that there are victims that can be exposed. Uh, so my interest would be into finding a way to maintain the safety for those employees that are within those um, businesses. Great, thank you so much. Um, does anyone have any questions um, for Ms. Ingram? All right, thank you. I, I appreciate your expertise and um, I'm sorry that this world has to deal with stuff like that. Um, but I appreciate people like you that are fighting uh, fighting against it. Um, thank you. Thanks so much for being with us tonight and, and I appreciate your willingness to serve. Um, also for the Sexually Oriented Business Licensing Board appointment of Ms. Amna Osman for a term expiring October 7th, 2024. Uh, Ms. Osman, are you here with us? Yes, yes. I'm sorry. I'm doing well. Thank you for joining us. And you can give us um, just a couple minutes on why you would like to serve as well. Well, I appreciate um, being nominated. And I think it's really critical and important um, to really have um, a representation and a voice uh, for folks that are working um, in the sexually oriented establishments. It's really critical that they're treated with dignity and respect. And it's really important uh, just to what um, you know, Ms. Ingram said, that human trafficking is a real issue that is affecting our community. And um, it is an issue that is not talked about a lot. And a lot of young folks are being exploited. Um, a lot of young women, LGBTQ folks. So it's really important that as we make uh, sound decisions around licensing and regulation, that uh, we consider this very carefully. I have been in public health most of my career, worked in human trafficking, not only in the United States, but also overseas. And I see the impact of uh, human trafficking on individuals that don't have a representation and a voice uh, to really try to eradicate that, but to also represent them fairly and equitably. So I hope that as being part of this board, uh, that I can actually be um, one to really shed light on some of these issues and really listen carefully to ensure that these establishments are successful, but also are treating their employees um, in our community safely um, and equitably. So it's really critical for us to really have a thriving uh, community. Thank you so much. Um, does anyone have any questions for Ms. Osman? I am scrolling and looking down and I'm seeing no hands. Okay, thank you so much for your willingness to serve um, for, for all of you. Um, so thank again, you. I, I put all of these items on consent so that we could just take one roll call vote. Um, so if anyone has any objections to any of these nominees, please let me know now so we can pull them off if that's the case. And again, I am seeing none, so I will take, um, can I get a motion please, actually? So much. And a second? Second. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, Councilman Rosenberg. Aye. Council Lady Evans. Council Lady Evans. Sorry, I couldn't find my mute. Um, aye, thank you. Council Lady Lee. Aye. Council Lady Murphy. Aye. Councilman Rutherford. Aye. Council Lady Sepulveda. Aye. Councilman Sledge. Aye. Council Lady Stiles. Council Lady Stiles. Johnson is a yes. Councilman Pulley. Aye. Perfect. 
Thank you so much. I appreciate everyone. And we'll, um, this meeting is adjourned and I'll see y'all on the floor. Madam Chair? Yes. Um, do we need to take up the late, the, third, the amendment on third reading? I don't have an amendment on third reading. Okay, it's on council member Stiles' bill. I, it's fine, I just wanted to bring up the hope that we could change that rule, but okay. Uh, Never mind. Hi, and, and this is uh, Elizabeth Waits, and um, there, there was also a uh, an amendment on a third reading bill that I was going to ask the committee whether it had any objection to a suspension of the rules so that we could amend a bill on third reading. Uh, I personally don't like amending bills on third. I feel like there's plenty of time to defer and get things right throughout the process. So I would have I would have chose to it um, just you know in general. Um, I think it muddies the water by the time you get to third reading. Um, so that would be my you know opinion. But I'm sure everybody else has their, you know their own. <laughs> I'm happy to, to listen to it if we want to open up this discussion right now. I'm, you know, I'm I'm fine having a brief conversation about it, and I'm also happy to call a special meeting um, about it as well. If we want to do. I, I think I think we really need to take a deep dive into how um, we do things in general. Uh, and I do have some suggestions on um, committee structure. Um, there's a couple of rules changes that I think um, should be looked at for sure. Um, and I see Council Lady Sepulveda, you have the floor. I, I have no problem with the amendment. I, I just wanted to state that. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't have this on my agenda, so I don't know um, if it's just something that will come up on the floor as far as a, a third reading uh, amendment to, you know, suspension of the rules for that. I, I, I don't know. Um, but as far as a rule change to do it, I would, I personally would, would be opposed to it. Does anybody else have any comments on that, or um, is my agenda wrong? Council, this is Hannah Zeitlin. I think I can maybe speak to the agenda. I think that we normally, I, I'm not sure that we normally do put um, amendments on third reading on the can, on the rules committee agenda. I think we usually only put late items on the rules agenda, even though a third uh, a third reading amendment does require a rule suspension. Okay. Okay. But, so, just, but I mean, you're welcome to talk about it. Yeah. So there's, a, and there's two, there's two, uh, third reading amendments. Okay. Um, well, I guess we'll just <laughs> take it up on the floor. I see council lady Murphy. Do you have a, um, you have the floor. Yeah, as for talking about rule changes and things like that, I mentioned this previously when a committee name was changed. Those are things that we need to discuss as a whole and a group as the committee, not a free for all, talking about the rules comprehensively, our committee process comprehensively, and not piecemeal it. Um, I think, you know, not to pull rank here or something, but I've been on this committee since I started in 2015. And I think that we have done a good job comprehensively looking at this over the last five years. But when we start just throwing out, throwing up ideas, it's not done comprehensively and we need to do it that way. So I look forward to you as chair um, pulling us together as the committee. I have no problem all of the council discussing it, but at the end of the day, we do have to know some of these ideas and com comments. So thank you. I agree with you 100%. And so um, with that, I will be calling in the next two weeks or so um, a special meeting just for our committee to discuss um, not only the committee structure, which we had a, a full committee, I mean, a full council um, special meeting to talk about those uh, that particular thing. And I have pulled lots of different people's um, comments and suggestions and, and put it put together what I think um, is at least a good starting point for uh, for a conversation about restructuring committee and and hopefully making our committees stronger um, and more productive and actually something that that matters um, versus sort of what it is now which is not very effective to say it nicely um, so I'll be doing that, and, and I appreciate everybody that's given me um, all of their opinions and um, and suggestions. So, with that, um, I think we're adjourned. Does anybody else have anything? Everybody's good. Awesome. We are adjourned. Thank you.
This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.